sometimes it takes a while to to see it on my screen so i don't know whether i'm live or not but um one two three i think yes i think i think i'm live <laughs> okay i think i've been live for a while and i just didn't realize it okay good evening everyone i tonight i wanted to discuss about the no time limit application because i know i said i think in the past that i would show you how to do it so this is the how to do it um uh, live video okay so this uh, is applicable only to those who have um, indefinite old indefinitely to remain stickers on their passports and those who want to transfer that sticker into a biometric residence card uh, there are a lot of benefits of doing it um, uh, I've heard from someone in I have heard from someone this week that apparently a, a 70 year old 70 year old um, uh, was contacted by the home office uh, requesting her to uh, change apply for uh, her uh, biometric biometric card so this is how you would do it okay so if you just bear with me I'm just going to share my screen so that I can discuss how you can actually make the application and what documents how to complete the form uh, what documents you need to submit with your application so um, Okay, just just bear with me because I think I knew how to um, share my screen before. Oh, here it is. Share screen. Um, where is it? Application. There it is. Okay, share. Okay, so um, let me just check and see if um, someone can, if there are no problems, because otherwise I would be just talking to myself and then it would be a complete waste of my, my time tonight. If and no one can hear me. I'm just going to grab the grab the comments and check on my um, personal profile. Okay, but I'm just going to mute it. Okay, all right. Okay, so you can people can actually can hear it. I've got I've got comments. Hi, Tarik. Um, right. So no time limit application. So if you want to make an application to transfer your uh, old indefinitely uh, to remain uh, sticker visa from your old passport into a biometric card, then this is how you would do it, okay? And also this application will apply to those who have had the biometric residence permit but has expired. So you need to, you need to, um, no, I'm, just, I'm just going to mute it. How do you mute this? So that I can, I don't have to listen to it. Oh, okay. For some reason, it wouldn't. All right. Sorry for the interruption. Okay. So if you Google no time limit application, you will come up with um, choices. Make sure you click on the application form. Okay. There's, uh, you will come up with a guidance. So uh, the Home Office has. Uh, issued a guidance and you can read it if you want or you can uh, just go directly to the application form which is NTL and this is the version September 2018. This is a very straightforward application and that's why I'm doing this because I don't want people to uh, well you can waste your money I'm not saying if you really don't know how to do it and you can't be bothered to do it then by all means pay a lawyer to to uh, do it for you but you can do this yourself, okay? Because you've had already, you've already paid for a lawyer to do your indefinitely to remain. And so this one is just a matter of transferring that existing visa into a different format, which will be a card. So on the payment details, you can, this is straightforward. Again, it asks for contact address. Basically that's your address where the home office can reach you, your contact name, um, if it's different, uh, if, if you are using or you using an agent, uh, you're using a friend um, who can, you know, liaise on your behalf, then you can put that contact name on number two and then your full name, your date of birth. And as you can see, there is the fee of £229 by post. You can also do a premium service, but you have to book in advance and you can do it same day service. And that's more costly because you need to then pay 610 pounds to the uh, premium service uh, center for the same day service so that you know it, it costs more. 
post. But for by post, it's just only 229. So the applicant details, you need to provide two photographs when you submit this application. And again, it's your details, you know, you know those details, your name, your surname, your nationality, place of birth, that's all in your passport, passport details. And if you can remember your home office reference, then put it there. Don't worry if you can't remember, don't, you know, don't uh, dig all your documents um, in the cupboard and to, to look for the home office. It's not, it's not that required. You know, they, they will be able to trace your details if you can't have the home office reference don't worry about that national insurance number your uk address again that's that's for you to that's for you um to complete it's very straightforward email address again um name address of all correspondence now in 1.19 it asks about um whether or not you've, you've had a change of personal details. So it may be that when you had your indefinitely to remain, you were still single and then you've gotten married. And so, you know, you, when you apply for, when you submit this application, if you've been married, um, if you have married um, after you've obtained the indefinitely to remain, then you need to notify the home office because obviously they haven't got that, you know, they haven't got that information. So they need to know. And so, if you tick here, you've married and then provide the marriage certificate, okay? Or any other personal details that you want, um, that you want uh, the home office to note and, and record it in the biometric residence card. So you include it in this, in this box here. Okay, so it's, um, let me just read the question. The, the question, it says, other, explain below, you must include the details of why your personal details have changed. If you have previously informed the home office of a change of personal details, please tell us what this change was and when you notify the home office. So if you've already informed the home office, then, you know, you have to tell them again, unfortunately, it says here, you have to tell them again what it was and put it in that, um, in, in, the, in the box. So section two, if you have dependents, um, a partner or um, children, you need to include the details here. And again, you need two photographs of um, each of them. So if it's if there's two dependents, then two two photographs of each, and include the details on this on this section. Again, very straightforward. Um, you know, a ten year old can complete that for you. Okay. So section three, personal history, is very important to have this accurate. Okay, because if you say yes. But really, the answer should have been no, and the Home Office discovers that you should have ticked no, then they will accuse you of deception, okay? And they don't like it. They don't like it when, um, even though if you said, oh, well, you know, I've accidentally, I haven't actually, you know, I thought this is what you meant by this, and uh, that's why I ticked yes. Well, this part here is very, very important to get it accurate, to get it, to get it, um, you know, correct, and make sure you double check whether you've ticked yes or no. So it asks about criminal conviction. So if you had your indefinitely to remain and in between after you've obtained it, you have, um, you know, had a criminal conv conviction, like for example, you've been arrested for um, assault, you've been arrested for shoplifting, uh, even minor, even minor, um, you know, criminal offense, you need to, you need to, you need to let them know and, and write it here. And don't worry if you've had, you know, those, those things, because even though you have, it's, it's just, um, they, they don't, they don't then say, oh, well, you know, you, they we're not going to issue you with this no time limit uh, biometric card because you have this offenses. They're not going to do that. Okay. Um, because this application does not ask whether or not you've got a good character. That's, that's a different application that's for indefinitely to remain. And that is also for the nationality. If you apply to become British, then that is a requirement. But for this application, um, it, it's not a requirement, but you need to be honest. You need to be able to say, well, you know, since I've had my indefinitely to remain, I've had, uh, you know, a criminal conviction of uh, this criminal offence, and you need to be, because they, they like it when, when you're, you're quite upfront with them, so it's better to be upfront and, and tell them what it is. So, 3.3 uh, asks if you have, or any dependents, um, have any civil judgments against you, um, or civil penalty under Immigration Act. So it asks about whether or not somebody sued you for money. So it can be that uh, you you owe somebody money and you didn't you didn't pay and um, and then they filed a case against you and there's a, a civil county court judgment. So you need to take yes. And again, you know, you need to give them details. So it can be um, let's say I don't know rent arrears. 
for example, or um, credit card debt. So these, these type of things need to, to be included and um, you need to be upfront. Right, so, um, and 3.5 to 3.10, they these are very, um, these are just standard questions, okay? If you apply for a uh, business visa, any other types of visa, these questions are there. Um, and if you, for example, if you have been charged with a criminal offense um, for which you have not been uh, tried tried yet, then you take yes, and whether you're suspected of um, involved or involved in crimes against humanity, that's a bit you know extreme. Then if you've been involved in terrorist activities in any countries or um, you support uh, organizations, um, organization which concerns ter terrorism. So you need to read this properly and the answer should be no. Okay. And then it asks, how long have you lived in the UK? And and therefore, you know, you, you, you include that there. And then details of any absences if for more than uh, six months at a time. Okay, only six months. If you've been absent for only a month, then don't include it because it doesn't ask for that. Only for six months at a time. And then it asks for your social, um, what ties you have with um, other countries. So, for example, Philippines, if you are still linked, to, obviously you have Philippine passport and you have you still have families there, then put Philippines and social culture. You can put family, family, siblings or relatives and um, uh, distant relatives, if, if, you, if, if you will. OK, uh, so OK, personal three. So here. Here, personal three definitions. So remember what I said about your personal history, how you have to complete it accurately. These, uh, there are definitions here, okay? So what, what does war crimes, uh, what are war crimes and crimes against humanity, genocide, terrorist activities. So it, it specifies what these are. And so if you think that you may be involved in, um, in those, then you need to, you need to um, you need to disclose it. So biometric residence permits. On, this is this only applies if you have been issued with biometric residence permits, and especially if you have, um, for example, you have uh, had the biometric card and and you now want to renew it, then you can you can uh, include this here. Okay, so all the details when it was taken, fingerprints. So I won't go through. I won't. I won't um, explain this because it, they're very straightforward. So, so just the requirements, okay? So photographs. You need photographs. Two photographs. Passport. Passport photos. And then you need your passport. You need your um, indefinite leave to remain status. That that is, uh, if it's it's if it's a sticker uh, stuck to your old passport, then you need to also submit that, okay? And then any other, it would help if you have also, if you also supply all your passports, all the other passports that you've had. So it says all passports you have been issued since you were granted your indefinite leave to remain. Okay, so all of those passports is better to, um, well, that's required actually. And then to prove that you have been uh, living in the UK, then you need to, you need to submit these documents. So one of so it says evidence of continuous residence in the UK during the period. So this will be council tax letters. If you don't have them, then contact the council and ask for the council, a copy of the council tax letters. And um, the council may say, well, we can't give you those, but they should have going back the five years. Okay. So I'm not sure if they can go back more than five years, but at least five or six years they should have. Uh, duplicate. They should. It should be on the record, and you should be able to request those uh, letters from your GP confirming dates of attendance. And also, you may be able to ask the the um, the GP to confirm that you have been registered at, you know, from from that surgery at that surgery uh, since at that date. Okay, so they've been able to confirm that you, you, they've known you. You registered at that uh, surgery. 
So if you're uh, a student, then um, college or school, confirming attendance, uh, electricity, gas, water bills, letters of um, employment as well, letters of employers, uh, can be employment contract as well. Um, and then you need to sign the form. Okay, so it asks for, from the app, it says from the applicant, and then it's just confirming that you understand everything. So read it properly, you understand, and, um, and to the best of your knowledge, it's so accurate. And so you sign here. And if your documents, any of your documents that you submit is with a joint person, then the joint person must also sign. So it can be your husband, um, it can be a, a, a partner, then you, know, you put their details here and ask them to sign that, this section. And then again, this is the, again, verification, uh, you need to sign. Uh, this is for the third party, I mean, that this is quite rare, but if you are renting, for example, and you, that, that third party is, uh, you're submitting that uh, document that is addressed for, uh, to a third party, it's not related to you, then you also, you also must ask them to, to sign it as a, con as a form of consent. And then this part you need to also sign from the applicant, okay? And here is the list of the, and that's the list of the documents, okay? So that's very, very, you see, you see it's, it's page, how many pages? There's only 21 pages, a no, no, no time limit application. The bulk of it um, is, there's just the documents that you need to submit. So, um, <clears throat> one of the, so in terms of proof of, proof of residence, also submit uh, bank statements, okay? Um, P60s or wage slips um, from the date that you were granted definitely to remain up to, you know, up to the date when you make the application. Um, tenancy agreement, mortgage statements, you can also submit. It's basically proving that since you've been granted indefinitely to remain, you have resided in the United Kingdom and, um, and then you give them all the documents that you have to prove that you have resided. So there's no point um, just submitting them with, you know, 2000 and let's say 2010. So let's say 2010, you were granted indefinitely to remain. And then you're now applying uh, 2018. So you need to provide going back to 2010 documents, okay? So you need to dig all your documents and see if you can find any. Um, if, you if you've lost them, then, you know, if you've lost them, that's, that's, that will be such a shame. But your passport should, um, should, should, give, should provide the proof that you have lived in the UK, you've come here, you know, because it will have stamps. For example, if not, then um, tenancy agreement, you will have tenancy agreement if you've lived at the same address, if not mortgage statements, if not bank statements, but the bank statements also only go back as far as five years. So if you order your bank statements from the bank, so the bank will um, give you only up to five years. Okay, so that will give, get you to 2013. So you still then have three years to prove whether or not you've lived in the UK but between 2010 to 2013. So um, in the, if you don't have those, um, you have, you, you're going to have to be a bit creative and, and see if you can uh, maybe contact the council to see uh, if somebody can, uh, you know, check if they can provide you with copies of uh, documents, check your emails. So emails will have, will store a lot of, um, you know, information, maybe documents as well. So, so that's, that's it really, that's it really for, um, for this no time limit application. As you can see, it's very straightforward. Um, if you have any questions about the, um, any questions, you have any questions on any aspect of this application, then let me know, you know, if, for example, oh, Annalisa, I, I don't know what uh, this question means. Do I have to do, do I have to say this? Do I have to um, include this? Then, you know, by all means, just, you know, message me and let me know. Okay, so I'm just going to check if there are any, any questions. I, I don't think there are any questions because there's not many 
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, hi, Geraldine. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Yes. So, guys, that's it. Okay, very quick. It's as you know, it's very, very quick, and there's not um, there's not much to say about that. But oh, but except maybe um, the Home Office are probably contacting people to change from their old indefinitely to remain um, visa visa that's stuck on their um, on on their passport. I think to make sure that. Um, to make sure that they can trace you, as well, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the reason is. But to to have the you know the biometric, it, because it's it's a proof that you can work. You can have a right to you have a right to remain in the UK permanently. Because although it says you know the the sticker says indefinitely to remain, but the biometric residence card has been around for a while now, and so uh, people who are looking at your indefinitely to remain sticker will say, well, what is this? Okay. So if you say, oh, well, I have, I have been definitely to remain. I can't stay in the UK. They will say, well, what is this? Okay. And some, if you, if you actually look at your um, indefinitely to remain, that will have expired already. Although it says definitely to remain, but some will have an expiration date. Okay. I remember there was one client who came and said, well, you know, I've, I've exp my, uh, my visa expired. And he, he didn't quite know what to do because he didn't know what to apply, what application to apply, because this one has not really been you know this this is ntl has been one of those applications that you don't really know it exists unless you know a client comes to you and say well you know this is my problem what what do i do with it okay so because it's not a regular um application form it's only for those people who have had the indefinitely to remain and they have to or or the passport or they've lost the passport or indefinitely to remain sticker um so they can't prove that they have actually right to remain in the uk Whereas if you have the biometric card, you know, all you have to do is just, you know, um, show it and, and it shows that you have the right. But even with that, it has an expiration date. So if you have indefinitely to remain, it, it may be that you don't have the 10 years, because it used to be 10 years, but sometimes it will have, it's issued um, at the same time, it's expired at the same time as your passport expires. So then you have to really, um, you know, check it and then you have to apply and um, renew it and you use this application. Okay, guys, um, yeah, I think that's that's it, really. So have a lovely weekend, everyone. Um, I'm for a change, I was on time this evening. Nine o'clock, nine o'clock, I came. <laughs> nine o'clock, I was here. Okay, um, hi, Daisy, hi, Teresa, Teresita, hi, Norlisa. Yeah. Okay, have a lovely evening. Bye, everyone, bye, bye. Okay. Hey. All right, to switch this on. Okay, stop.